In a previous module, we looked at the governing equation for transient heat transfer. Recall that it was a partial differential equation describing how temperature changes with time and location. Now the solution procedure for this partial differential equation is outside the scope of this module. The final solutions for the partial differential equation have been obtained for three geometrical shapes, a sphere, infinite slab, and an infinite cylinder. And these solutions have been converted to charts that we can use to study transient heat transfer. Let's see how these charts are constructed. Incidentally, these charts are also known as Heisler charts since they were first drawn by Heisler in 1944. The y-axis of this chart is a temperature ratio. This temperature ratio is Ta minus T divided by Ta minus Ti, where Ta is the surrounding environmental temperature in which an object is placed to heat or cool. Ti is the initial temperature of that solid object and T is the temperature at any time during the heating or the cooling process. On the x-axis we have Fourier number. Fourier number is a dimensionless number and it contains the following quantities K over rho CP times T divided by DC square. Now K is the thermal conductivity of the object, rho is the density of the object, CP is the specific heat of the object, T is the time for either heating or cooling and DC is the characteristic dimension. Let's uh, substitute the units to make sure that this is indeed a dimensionless number. Now K can be written as joules per second meter degree C, rho is kilogram per cubic meter, CP is joules per kilogram degree C, T is in seconds, and DC is in meters. So all the items cancel out and we obtain a dimensionless number. Now Fourier number is a ratio between the rate of heat conduction across DC, that's the characteristic dimension, in a body of volume DC cube divided by a rate of heat storage in a body of volume DC cube. It gives us an understanding of how heat is penetrating in an object. So if we have a large value of Fourier number that tells us that there is a greater depth of heat penetration in that object. Next, let's see how this chart is then constructed in those x and y axis. Recall that we have temperature ratio on the y axis. Now the y axis is on a log scale. So we have 1 at the top and then 0 0.1, then 0 0.01 and 0 0.001. Uh, in other words, this is on a log scale. Whereas the x-axis is on a regular scale and uh, for Fourier number. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And we have these incline lines. So this first line is for the value of inverse of the Biot number. 
Now remember that Byatt number which we also saw in a previous module is HDC over K. So the inverse of Byatt number is K over HDC. So this very first line, this inclined line on the Heisler chart has a value of zero. That means the inverse of Byatt number equals zero anywhere on this line. The next line is then 0 0.1, then 0 0.2 and so on to uh, a inverse of Byatt number value of 100. So what we have on this Heisler chart is a Fourier number in the x-axis that contains the value for time and on the y-axis we have the temperature ratio. So that should tell you that we can use this chart to either find the time for heating or cooling to reach a certain center temperature, center of the object, or at any given time we can estimate what will be the center temperature. So the way you use this chart we can answer those types of questions as we will see later in an example. One of the items that is important here is the characteristic dimension. Let's see what are the characteristic dimensions for different geometrical shapes. The characteristic dimension for a sphere is always the radius. The characteristic dimension for infinite cylinder is the radius of the cylinder. And the characteristic dimension for the infinite slab is the half thickness. So in other words, these charts are used to obtain the temperature at the center of the object. That is why we use radius for sphere or as infinite cylinder, whereas we use half thickness for the infinite slab. So the procedure of how we use these charts depends on what type of information is given to us. If we can calculate Fourier number from the given information, in other words, if the time is known and we can find Fourier number, and also from the given information we can find the inverse of Byatt number, then we can use this chart with those two values and find out what is the temperature ratio. And from the temperature ratio, usually the unknown is the temperature at that time. So T is what is then obtained from the chart. So if we want, during heating or cooling, the temperature of, at the center of the object to reach a certain value, in other words, this T is known, and if we also know the inverse of Byatt number, then again we can use this chart to find out Fourier number and from that we can find out the time that will be needed to reach that temperature at the center of that object. We will again use a uh, numerical example to illustrate how this chart is used in another module.